I'm comedian Timmy Boyle, and this is the greatest live Instagram comedy experience that nobody knew about. March of 2020, I just arrived home from tour when COVID-19 shut down the world. So despite being severely technically challenged, I started a daily live Instagram show right here from my living room. Because how hard could it be? And how long could a pandemic last? Apparently longer than five months. So now, a hundred episodes later, I've called comedians as diverse in experience as they are in style from all around the world to discuss comedy, life, and, well, whatever. I had no goals, which was a great idea. I avoided tech checks, which was a bad idea. And I eventually wore no pants. The jury's still out on that one. And my OJ, over 150 days, transformed from refreshing drink to rancid mystery liquid right before our eyes. It was a random, free-flowing, hilariously messy ride into the minds and backstage lives of entertainers where anything could happen, and did, including a trip to a goat farm. Overcoming a lack of direction, resources, and tech ineptness, as well as multiple zombie cyber attacks, a project not expected to last even a week soon developed into a must-watch show like no other. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself, right here, on another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Is that it? Did we get it all? Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. It is that time on some night in the middle of a very, very long virus process. You have gathered to watch a show that is unlike any other, a show that really has one goal, to have no goals. Would you please gather around all of your loved ones or the people you have come to hate over the last couple months because they have been in close quarters with you to watch something that may or may not go off the rails really quickly. So ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to his chair, me, Timmy Boyle. Bum, ba, da, ba. What's up, people? What's up, my crowd? My crowd of four people right now hanging out in my living room. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Timmy Boyle. Uh, you are currently in my living room in front of, there's Alyssa Milano and the Hulkster, Yoda, Batman. Uh, there's a Care Bear down there. There's a lot of stuff in there. One day I should just walk you through everything that's behind me because you just kind of see kind of this same frame. There's a Cabbage Patch kid right up there. Um, but anyways, uh, I want to welcome you here uh, on this uh, on this evening in the middle of quarantine. Who knows? Uh, believe me, when I sat down to do these shows uh, 59 episodes ago, I had just got off tour and then I heard, oh no, we're going to be in lockdown? Oh, what should I do until we get out of lockdown? I know. Let's start a, a daily show where we call comedians from all around the world at like 7 p.m. every night. And then I did that because I thought that this virus would be over, you know, a couple weeks. But here we are, still going. We're not doing every day now, though, because I really wanted to work on some other projects as well. And I realized, wow, this thing's taken forever. But we are running now the shows Monday through Thursdays uh, from 5, uh, wait, not, not from 5, at 7 p.m. It's really always at 7 p.m. And here we are once again. You might be in your living room. You might be in your bathroom. It might be the only quiet place you have in the house right now. We don't know. But you are in for a show that has, has multiple technical problems over 59 episodes. We have had tons of issues. We have had things that have gone horribly wrong. But we have had moments that you will never, ever see on any other show because we only have one goal, to have no goals. So we don't know where tonight's show is going to go. And if you missed the show, 
you might just miss that one special moment. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight is Marcus Evans, and he will be in here. Marcus, I believe, is already in the room. Some of you have already said hi to him. That is so very nice. Um, Fidget Comedy has has mentioned my COVID hair. Yes, indeed, it is becoming a little bit of a mess. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a haircut until at least the fall, which is when I'm hoping the tour can start up again, the circuit tour you can see on upstandingcomedy.ca. But uh, my hair is getting a little unwieldy. But I'm hoping that soon, one day, I will look like one of those 1980s trolls. That would be super cool. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, before we bring in your guest tonight, Marcus Evans, let me just go through here and send off some waves and greet some regulars and some new people. Uh, Crystal's Punny is in the house, Fidget Comedy. John Hollingsworth is in the house. John's been on the show before. We hope to have him back in again, actually. Um, uh, Let's see, Mary Jane Baker is here, some of our regulars. Uh, Fidget Comedy is that toilet paper roll with episode 58 written on it. Yes, it is, John, and we will be doing the grand reveal, turning that to episode 59 in just a moment, so hang on there. Uh, Poodle 986, this is the first time we've had a dog in the room. Um, the uh, Let's see, who else we got here? Marcus is there. Let's say a wave to Marcus. Don't go anywhere, Marcus. You're about to be brought into this absolute mess. I am Mai is here, great fan of the show. Joy is here, a longtime supporter as well. Everybody, oh, I love the way this the community that we have here. Everybody is is just saying hello to each other. Um, and of course, it has been mentioned that my mom is not in the room. Usually, my mom is in the room at this particular time, and everybody is supposed to say hello to my mom, but my mom's not here. And you might be saying, "But Timmy, do you know what's happened to your mom? Do you know what's wrong with your mom?" No, because I don't talk to her. I don't talk to anybody. I literally don't. So if you're a friend of mine and you're watching this and you're like, you never call me, I don't call anybody. The only time my mom even knows what's going on in my life is when she watches this show. So let's hope everything's fine at my parents' house and that she will eventually come in. And when she does come in, you make sure you say hi to my mom. We're about to bring Marcus Evans in here, but before we do that, let us now do the official toilet paper reveal. Uh, We have been doing this show 58 episodes, way longer than I ever imagined. But now, ladies and gentlemen, technology has failed us. But what has never failed us? Our toilet paper. Here we go. Episode 58 is now changing into... Episode 59 of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Um, And yes... That is a really wonky nine because it is hard to write. Even after all these episodes, it is hard to write numbers backwards. And I don't know where I was going with this one, kind of. I but it took me a while. I had to kind of map it out in my head, and then I realized I was starting it off wrong. Anyways, that's where we're at right now. Episode fifty nine. Marcus Evans is coming in the room here. We are going. Oh, my mom is here, ladies and gentlemen. My mom is here. Oh, woo! Mom is well. Mom is fine. Everyone say hi to mom. Everyone say hi to mom. Here we go. While you guys are saying hi to mom, we're going to bring in Marcus. Uh Uh-oh. Marcus. Marcus. I can't. You're unable to join. Marcus, you're unable to join. Um, I tried to invite you in. You are unable to join. Oh, wait. There you are. You're able to join. Marcus Evans, everybody. Ba-bam. There What's we go. Up? There we go. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good, Marcus. How are you doing? Good, good. You can hear me, right? You can hear me clearly. I can hear you perfectly fine. Are you are you uh, in a good Wi-Fi zone? Yes, I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm good to go, All man. Right. We have uh, we have had people, uh, comedians that have been in their storage locker facilities and in their cars. <laughs> tours of downtown Nashville. Uh, one of them actually was in front of a. Just look like a brick wall. I think they were in trouble, actually. Just, oh. <laughs> but, but are you you're safe though? You're good. I'm good. I'm good. Having a good day. Great weather out here in Los Angeles. So I'm ready. Of Whatever course. questions you have, I'm I'm ready for you. <laughs> hey, um, so where exactly uh, are you quarantined? Uh, you're in Los Angeles, but like where? If you can give an address, that would be very helpful to all of us. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh I'm in Koreatown in Los Angeles. I don't know where. I don't know. Most people know where that's at. It's oh. close to downtown. It's a little west of downtown Los Angeles. It's Koreatown? Correct. Like, is in, like, Korea, like, the country? 
Uh, you can say it. it. It's really a cool area. It's been um, a blessing to me. It's, it's close to trains, buses. Uh, it's kind of almost like middle ground to Los Angeles. So it's 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 really cool. All right. Hey, um, I don't, I don't want to stumble you. I don't know where your thoughts are on alcohol. This is just straight up orange juice. But I have been drinking the same orange juice for 59 episodes. Oh. And so it's a little fermented. My mind goes a little bit off. And so I just want you to know things feel a little bit weird. But um, I'm sticking to this gag. I didn't think it was going to last this long, but uh, I'm still at it. Yeah, I, I remember the uh, orange juice from the clean comedy contest. So. <laughs> yeah, so it us it's usually refreshing. But I'm telling you what, Marks, I don't know if you've ever drank a glass of orange juice for 59 days. I just keep topping it up. So like most, this has been sitting here for probably two months. <laughs> it's not as, not as cool as you think it might be. That's hilarious. <laughs> hey, uh, there's a lot of regulars in here. I know there's some, uh, some comics in here. I know um, but at various levels. Um, we got some new people as well. Just for those tuning in, you're watching Calling Comedians Inc. Quarantine. Timmy Boyle's up on top. That's Marcus Evans below in case your phone, unless your phone is upside down. Marcus, um, before we get into comedy and life here, uh, I just want to do a little bit of a skill testing question. You know who that is, do you? Alyssa Milano? All right, all right. We're, yeah, that's all we need to know. You're, okay, so we can continue the show. Yeah, I remember who's the boss. I remember her very well. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, wait, can I, can I ask, uh, how, how old are you? Well, how old do I look? <laughs> I'm, okay, well, how about this? Uh, I'm going to say that you're under 60. Mm, that would and, be yes. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> that's that's fair. That's that's a very accurate guess. I'm going to say I'm going to say you're I'm going to say you're 27. Uh hmm. Well, I I do look young. I will say that. Uh, Wait, you're I, older than that? Well, I will say this. Actors in LA, they don't say how old they are. So I'm probably not going to tell you that. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, I I get that rule absolutely. Um how old do you think I am? Let's play that game. Oh, and I won't be offended. Seriously, not I at all. Would say around the same age. Yes. What? Twenty-five. Yeah, you're around twenties, mid, mid, late twenties. No. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh. I am. Okay. I am. I'm actually. Uh, I'm actually thirty-nine. Whoa. Okay. Well, Interesting. Yeah, you, you don't look it. You don't look that at all. Thank you. I appreciate that. There's a little bit of little bit of gray. Actually. It might the front there, there's a little bit of gray right here, which is coming in a little bit prematurely, but I think that might be COVID related. Huh. Wouldn't have noticed. If you didn't yeah, know. well, thank you. But I guess if we both know Alyssa Milano, we're probably, um, but I think you're definitely younger because you've got to get gigs in LA. Um, so, uh, Marcus, I met you down at uh, the Clean Comedy Challenge um, mm. run by Leslie Norris Towns and Joby Sad. Mm. Uh, it was an amazing experience. It was my first time down there. It was my first time even down in the uh, the LA area. We did it in Pasadena at the Ice House. Mm -hmm. um, was that your first time doing a challenge of that sort or that particular challenge? Tell me about kind of your background going into that challenge. Yeah, it was my first time doing the challenge. A couple years before that, I don't know if you know Carrie Pomeroli. I don't know if you know her. Only by name. Okay. Well, she... Um, she was trying to get me to do it a couple of years ago, and I, I regretted not doing it. Uh, okay. So I, I wanted to make sure when it came back to Los Angeles that I was going to do it this time. And so I, I did it, and I, I'm so glad I did it, even though I was exhausted that whole time because I really didn't take any time off work before this. So I worked up until Friday, and not that I wasn't preparing before that, right. but um, then Monday came around, and you know, we're there all day. You're there all day, pretty much. Yep. Uh, and it was it was a good time. I've learned a lot. I met a lot of people. But it was uh, just three or four days straight of just all day comedy. But and which is fine and all. But I wish I would have taken some days off work, you know, prior to that. So I would have had the stamina. But I, I was on fumes some of those days. You all probably didn't notice. But uh, no, no, I, de I definitely didn't notice that. I mean, I noticed there were fumes down there, but it was LA area. You never know what fumes you're <laughs> soaking in. That's right. Especially down by the club. Had you ever been in the Ice House before? Yeah, I've performed there a few times. It's not the easiest place to get into. Okay. Uh, so, so definitely when they had that there, and then Leslie even did a show uh, after the, the challenge was over. So I did that as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I've been down there a couple of times prior. I performed it at least two times uh down there prior it's a good club i would highly recommend 
if you can. Now, out of, uh, I was quite, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a starstruck person, but there are certain uh, performers in my life that, that I would consider people that I, that I uh, really, really respect. Um, walking into that, the ice house there, um, I immediately got f a photo with myself and Bob Newhart up on the wall. Mm. Was, there a, was there a comic from the past or even uh, more recent that was maybe up on the wall that you kind of walked by and went, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm performing where this person performed? Um, I'm always in awe, maybe that's not the best word, but I always love seeing comics that have done sitcoms on the wall at all these comedy clubs. I'm like, oh my God, I'm following in their footsteps. I, I never thought I would be doing stand-up. I came into stand-up very, uh, actually, I don't, I don't want to age myself. But yeah, I, fair you know, enough. <laughs> I came, in, came into stand-up late in life. And so just to see these people that I grew up watching on sitcoms, I'm like, oh my God oh my goodness, you know, these people went down the same path. I'm performing on the same stage that they did. I'm like, oh my goodness. It was just inspiring. And uh, I was just trying to soak up as much as I could while I was there. Um, now, I also, gro growing up, I was not a stand-up kid. I, I fell into stand-up. I went to school for film and television. I was a sitcom kid. Um, I didn't even know Bob Newhart uh, did stand-up until uh, after I had already watched a couple of, you know, his ser the original series as a psychiatrist, and then as he went into uh, running the, the motel, the hotel, uh, the inn. Um, and so I grew up watching that. Cheers is my, my you know, my, my model sitcom of, uh, of where I kind of draw a comedy beat from and all that stuff. Were, were you also a, a sitcom kid, or were you a uh, stand-up kid. Did you watch a lot of stand-up growing up versus sitcoms? Um, it was mostly um, sitcoms growing up. It was, you know, Growing Pains, The Cosby Show, uh, mm -hmm. Family Matters, uh, Different World. It, it was definitely, we were heavy sitcoms. And then the old sitcoms like, you know, Sanford and Son, Mama's yep. Family, Make Room for Daddy, uh, Leave it to Beaver. I mean, if it was on TV and it was a sitcom, we were watching it, <laughs> okay? So, uh, yeah, I, I was a big big fan of sitcoms growing up and then as I got older I would watch uh premium blend on comedy central and, and you know comedy central presents like uh but I never thought of doing stand-up I just watched and watched and watched and I was like man if I was just taking five minutes to just sit and think and not watch people all the time I could have gotten started way sooner because I'm originally from Chicago okay. but I never did stand up in Chicago Right. I, I only did stand up. I ran into stand up out here. I just, you know, a friend of mine was, oh, her and I were taking an improv class together. And she was like, hey, I'm taking a stand up comedy class. You know, do you want to take it with me? I was like, sure. It was like $50 for five classes. And it, it really was just an open mic, but it was such a blessing and that it got me on stage. It got me going. Yeah, yeah. So, now, um, now, Chris, Crystal's punny here, one of our viewers, uh, she says, you're good looking and in L.A. Uh, just nothing you still get the good jobs. Um, so I don't know if you're already taken, but uh, Crystal's Punny is just a click away, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Crystal and I have become friends. We've been messaging each other. And uh, your show and your invite inspired me to start my own <laughs> Insta. <laughs> nice. So I had my first show last night with a comic that she's done, I don't know how many shows with me, like maybe less than 20 shows with me. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name's Diana Darling. She, uh, she always brings people. She promotes the show. She acts like it's Broadway every time she does my show. Uh, my show, I usually get like around 20 people, but she treats it like it's like national TV. And you nice. know how, you know, you being a producer also, you know how it is. Yeah. When people are just good with promoting the show, bringing people, going beyond what you ask them to do, you just naturally yeah. just have them on more and more and more. So I had her as my first guest, and then Crystal was there for that also. That's awesome. Well, Crystal, uh, Crystal is a, um, a huge supporter and fan up here. She uh, um, not only is a regular um a tender at our circuit tours that we run up here um, across Ontario every year in Canada. But um, she actually is on uh, Team Timmy, we call it. Um, she's a huge help and support. She helps us set up um, about four shows every tour, uh, drives around. And uh, we, we love we love Crystal immensely. And uh, she she's a a, um, a sponge of comedy. And so I'm not I am not surprised that she has stalked you or hunt or acted <laughs> with you at all. Um, we love her immensely. It's a, she's a good she's a good connect, and so uh, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy having her as a as a, a friend and an acquaintance. Um, uh, Lizzie, you brought up um, you brought up some of the sitcoms, and you mentioned, of course, the Cosby Show. Uh, we've talked about a whole bunch of topics across over the last uh, couple months here, um, talking about you know 
what is clean, what is not clean, how do you separate, um, you know, the, the personal life of a performer uh, versus their, their art. Um, where do you, where do you, where do you run with the Bill Cosby thing? Like, do you, do you, do you throw out the Cosby show as being such an impactful show for an entire generation and um, in terms of TV in general, um, because of what he did, found out we did personally? How, how do you draw that line in terms of person's personal life and the art that they created? Well, there are so many people involved in that show, not just him, obviously. Yeah. That I would hate to throw away the entire sitcom because of one man's problems. Right. Um, yeah, throw him out, definitely. But uh, I, don't, I, I wouldn't go as far as to throwing the show out because there were so many people there that did such hard work. And it was such a, a groundbreaking show for uh, African-Americans that I, I think that would be kind of an overreaction to throw the entire show out just because of, just because of him. Are you able? Are you, are you somebody who is who is able to sit down and and listen to one of his comedy specials now? This despite the information, like for like I went one of the very first comedy shows I think I ever went to. I don't even I don't even remember much of the comedy because I was really young in an outside arena, looking up at this one single solitary soul, Bill Cosby, sitting in a recliner chair with a table beside him, maybe even a drink on it. We couldn't even see him in the sea of people just on this huge monstrous stage and just telling these stories. And of course we watched them on big screen and I don't even know how old it was, but it was fascinating. And I could, I would still be able to listen to, I mean, his, his pacing and his comedy is still, I believe, you know, transcendent and so travels well. Are you able to listen to a Bill Cosby comedy set? Because some people can't, some people can't sit and they sit there and say, you know what? I can't do it. I, now I know too much. Yeah, I, I understand those people that that wouldn't listen to him or even uh, would refrain from watching the TV show. I understand that that completely. Mm -hmm. um, coming up, I've seen a few of his specials, but he was never really um, like my favorite stand up to watch. I don't, I can't really even say that I had a favorite stand up to watch. But so what I what I watch one of his shows today, um, no, in part because one, I was never immensely into him as a stand up. Right. And two, also knowing all that I know now, since that's just him, I probably will let that go because um, yeah, boy, it's, it's so unfortunate that these, that these people in society that are the most talented, sometimes they have the most issues. And it's, it's such a shame to see talent like that just thrown away because they couldn't get their personal life together. You should, man, one day I'm just going to tell everybody all my issues because it's true. Believe me, I got tons of issues and I'm super talented. So I get you. Man. I get you. <laughs> hey, so who, so then if stand up wasn't going to be your route um, and you kind of, you know, connected with it once you got into LA there, what was your route and who was your inspiration that put you on that path? Um, good question. Well, in Chicago, I started off pursuing a modeling career. And then from that, that kind of led to me pursuing acting. And I just fell in love with it from there. So I just started taking classes, doing small theater projects, doing short films, doing commercials, you know, booking some print jobs here and there. And then as the, uh, the business side of the industry kind of slowed down, that's what moved me out here to LA. Okay. Um, what, what I like about, I, I love the comics that have, have not just done stand-up comedy, but also they've moved into TV and film and they were able to have success that way as well. I think those are the people that I probably would most like to model my career after. I mean, I love doing stand-up comedy, but I definitely want to see a transition into uh, a sitcom or like, I would love to, like to me, like a lot of people, they say, well, Eddie Murphy, his best work was uh, coming to America. And it's hard right. to argue with that. Uh, but for me personally, my favorite work of his was Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, I just thought his acting... Really, number two. Very much so. His acting and everything in it was just perfect. I was like, oh my goodness, if I can ever... I, that's the movie of his that I've probably seen as much as Coming to America. So if I could sure. definitely have a career path, I would say it's uh, those comics that have uh, gotten into TV and film as well. Well, TV, TV and film is still my, my, uh, my goal. I mean, I think it was... Uh, who who was it? Who's the actor? Um, who's the actor that started when he was like, he got discovered when he was like 46, 47. Maybe Morgan Freeman was one of them. Um, and uh, so it's like, I got, I got time. So I got time, but I, I still, I want, I definitely want to go that route. That's still my favorite love. Mm -hmm. um, 
what what would be the what would be the show out there right now mm. that you would that that would be like that's the type of show that Marcus Evans would want want to be a part. Of. That's how you would maybe build a show. That's kind of the collection of people. The the, the like what what would be that show? That you'd be like that's a Marcus Evans comedy show. Good question. Uh, Thank that, you. That's and, why I do this show. <laughs> uh, now this answer would surprise you because it's actually not a sitcom. Okay. The Ellen Show. Say that one time. Is it the Ellen Show? Not, not exactly. Okay. Um, cause I, me and my my sick, me, I have like three siblings. <coughs> Excuse me. And you know, I, my parents would work all the time, and they told us, you know, they didn't want us watching TV all day, and they especially said, you know, don't watch the soap operas. So mm -hmm. what did we do? We watched the soap operas. <laughs> and, General Hospital was mine. Man, Young and the Restless is mine. To answer your question, Young and the, that's the show that I would most want to be on here in Los Angeles. Really? Yeah, cause it's just like two power families. And it's just, uh, I, I just love that stuff. I just, uh, it's, I still watch that even today. <laughs> After all these years, I'm still from a child till now. I've met a few of the people on that show. I, actually, I just met a girl recently that has been on that okay. show for ages. And I, I work in Beverly Hills. It's not bragging. I work in Beverly Hills, so I run into these people a lot. And it's just, uh, but yeah, if I could pick a show, it'd be definitely that. It's everyday acting. Yeah. And you just come out of there with your acting chops just fully developed. And that's that's pretty the show, pretty much the show I want to be on right now. I'm amazed at how at how quickly they I mean they pump out episodes at mm. a feverish rate. And like you said, you I mean you, you go in there and you just gotta you just gotta do it. That's right. Very much so. I've um I, I was fortunate to audition for it once and I was so surprised like when I went into CBS and I saw like how posh even the the area was where they were auditioning people like wow because I mean, you know like you're dealing with two rich families but even that's trickled down almost into the uh audition area i'm like this is like the nicest audition ever, really ever i'm like oh my goodness they spare no expense with that so <laughs> so it was cool though just seeing a big y and r sign uh yeah. upstairs at cbs and just going in there it's just just awesome um, I can't. Uh, I can't let this go. You. Uh, you used our key word, posh. So let me just do one more shout out to the Prince of <laughs> Nice Girls. Um, just a little. Anytime I can squeeze that in, I do. But you brought it up, not me. So uh, I can. I can do that. Um, when you were uh, when you're at the at the challenge, uh, you picked up something. I assume you got it at the challenge. I saw you post it on your Instagram page. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in right now, Marcus Evans, you should follow him. Mar Marcus the comic, I believe, yes, sir. Um, here on Instagram. But uh, I believe you posted. Uh, it was Lou Deck's book, Stand Up Decoded. Um, and uh, we had a chance to meet Lou Deck, uh, mm -hmm. and his his story is incredible. A uh, longtime entertainer um in uh in la area um and just i had some amazing conversations with them uh not with stand-up not being your um your main focus not even your you know your ultimate goal what was it about loot picking up that book and um that was important to you and since reading it what would be one of the biggest tips you pulled from it, it it's interesting how lou and i came to build a relationship because Lou he was there of course you know that he taught one of the, the seminars or one of the workshops and um, he ended up leaving his folder there which had like a lot of important papers oh you photocopied it all uh not exactly <laughs> oh I would have <laughs> anyway so he he, he he ends up leaving it there and I ended up having to just take it back to him uh so I I we all are nice people, but most people are good people. They're nice people. Yeah. So I, I went and, and took it back to, to his house. And then from there, he and I just, we talked. Uh, we built up a, a friendship. He gave me his book, actually. And, That's and awesome. Autographed it. He gave me another book also on more of like the history of stand-up comedy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been good because he, he even uh, is a part of a show at the Comedy Store with Argus Hamilton. Okay. Um, like, well, Argus, he has his, his podcast in the basement where he has, like, uh, he'll interview different comics or different actors uh, each week. And they also have, they have like, warm-up comics come. Or they'll have at least one warm-up comic before his his podcast. And I was able to do that. And Luke is a part of that show as well. Um, so that that's how the, my relationship with, with Luke has started. And, and even every now and then, he and I will just message each other. And uh, it's, it's been...
a, a good friend, a really good guy. Um, but I, I uh, there's nothing like getting wisdom from people that have gone before you. And you know that, obviously. Yeah. And uh, just from reading his book, just look at, at how diligent he was and how dogmatic he was and how organized he is with his jokes and everything, how, how seriously he took everything. Um, he actually started out as, as a door guy as well. And he started out from, you know, the ground roots up and just hearing a story like his is so inspirational how they are even, um, or this is maybe this happened last year, how they, I think they re redid his name at the comedy store. They put it back on the comedy store in a, I think a different mm -hmm. place and gave it a bigger, maybe a better spot. So, right. um, no, just reading the book, seeing how diligent he was, how organized he is, how seriously he took the craft is just inspiring to me. Yeah, he uh, he's one of my favorite people. We had a chance at, at, a, at a, a few conversations with him uh, down there and uh, just um, just a super interesting, good dude and, and, and really invested. Like when I was having conversations with him, um, never once did I feel that he was kind of like, um, chatting with me and then just kind of like going, let's kind of move on here. It was almost like, it was like, it was like he's in that conversation mm. um, from beginning to end and wherever that, wherever that conversation goes. Like I never felt like I was just, he was just kind of doing a glad handing circle. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's super cool. So I'm glad you, glad you got that friendship with him. I respect him immensely. Um, uh, we got Kaylee B saying, hi, Marcus. Of course, I'm up here. She completely and utterly oh. uh, hasn't said hello to me, but uh. she really knows you. Um, but uh, my name's Timmy Kaylee. If you want to say hi, that would be, would be kind of rude to just say hi to one person, I think. But uh, uh. Is she a friend uh, of yours? Yeah, she's a, a coworker of mine, a good friend, um, just a sweet girl, just awesome. I, I love working with her. And uh Good to see her. Good to see her here on the ground. I'm glad, you're glad she's here. Kaylee, uh, my name's Timmy Boy. You're obviously following Marcus already, but you can follow me too. That would be awesome. Hey, uh, <laughs> Crystal's Punny is uh, throwing a question out here, which uh, we've been talking a lot about zombies up here with the, the apocalypse. I don't know if it's hit LA at all, um, but uh, I, am, I am on a zombie hunt uh, constantly. Uh, I believe that they are um, currently dressing up as children and, and older women. And I, so I haven't been able to confirm, and I don't want to just be killing older women and making mistakes. So I, I haven't been able to nail it down yet. Um, we also have murder hornets up here. I don't know if you've heard about those. Do you, uh, do you have a, a preference of the way you would per like to die uh, by murder hornet or zombie if you had to choose one? Oh, I'll, I'll choose both. I'll, I'll choose all the above. Out here in LA, oh. you never know what's gonna happen out here in Los Angeles. This place is so crazy. <laughs> I never thought about the possibility of like a dead murder hornet that would be like a zombie murder hornet that's it oh yeah if i yeah if i'm gonna die that would be a way to die that's awesome um cj rossetti says this episode is extremely entertaining thank you marcus and the other guy okay um, I'm starting to feel this here. um so uh so anyways marcus i i, I just gonna throw this out here um uh, I, I look forward to being on your show i'm just gonna say that right now um <laughs> I didn't like the way you laughed at that. Anyways, that's the bell. Um, we're getting ready to shut it down the show here because uh, we always try to keep the shows relatively short because we know we're all busy in quarantine. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, as we get ready to close this show, what exactly have you been doing to make use of this time? Quite frankly, I look up on the news every day. This is my daily life. Like, I'm not, I'm not on the road. I'm not touring. Um, but when I'm at home, this is what I do. I'm not even wearing pants right now, Marcus. I don't know if you're wearing pants. Um, and uh, I might have to dust off my one pair of jeans. I haven't worn a pair of pants with a zipper in months. Mm. But, um, like, but I work at home. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I like living in the village I'm in. I don't, I don't deal with a whole lot of people because I get my people fixed when I'm on the road. So if I looked out into the street, I, I don't know I'm in a pandemic. Um, you know, in LA, obviously things are, are, are way more busy, way more hectic. Maybe, you, maybe you're out a lot more. But during this time, I read the news in the morning and the first thing I look for is, will this thing last for two more weeks? I'm really liking this break from the hustle. Um, what are you doing to cope? Is it, is it affecting you negatively, positively? Are you learning new skills? Or are you just kind of chilling and waiting for it to all end? It's been a great time for me, actually. Um, I, I still have my job. I'm not going to say where I work. I don't want to, I don't want to put that yeah. out. Fair but enough. I still have my job, which I, I thank God for that. Um, yeah, I've been writing. I've been doing a ton of writing. 
Um, because I, I don't know which door will open first. Will it be the acting door? Will it be the comedy door? Plus, I, I just love doing stand-up anyway, and I want to be extremely prepared. Like, I would love to have a comedy agent and just be performing everywhere. Right. So I, I've been writing like a madman. It's just now a matter of just memorizing these jokes, you know, adding act, yeah. act, act outs, facial expressions, things of that nature. Um, I've actually never read the comedy Bible before, so I'm reading that now for the first time. Okay. Uh, finishing up Lou's book. Um, still going over our notes from the from the comedy uh, clean comedy t- contest because it was just a lot of oh, wisdom wow. was, that was given yeah. there. Um, emailing casting directors, you know, sending them, you know, my website sending out postcards so whenever they get back they hopefully mine will be at the top of the mail mail list. Right. very much so just working out as much as i can because i i still uh pursuing print modeling out here in la yeah uh, the different beast out here than it is in chicago as you can imagine yeah uh, I can, yes very much so but yeah definitely uh you never you never want to stop learning you never want to stop growing there's always things to do um and it just put it forces you to think in new ways new creative ways okay how can i prepare myself in my apartment for that out there, how can I be as prepared as humanly possible? So when I get out there, it's like nothing to me. And that's really what I've been doing during this, this quarantine. That's awesome. I mean, one thing that I, I really, really, uh, and I'm not just saying this, um, one of the things I, I noticed about you and appreciated about you when we, when we met down in Pasadena was uh, a, a super incredible, um, almost, I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, you're human, like, like everyone else out there, I'm, I've, I've got a little bit of a, a God bang going through me. But anyways, does, that we don't need to get into that. But, um, but the, it seemed like an unbending uh, positivity. And um, I was really, really just, uh, I just, I just thought you were an incredibly bright light down there. And um, it, it comes off uh, here as well. Um, and I, and I, w- I wish you, I wish you the best. I wish you well. I hope we get a chance to, to work together uh, in the future in, in some way. Um, now, uh, as, as we go from, he- as we go from here, what is it that when you step out the doors, when everything does open back up, what is the first thing that you're going to do? It might not even be career related. Like maybe <laughs> you're just waiting to run into Wendy's and sit in one of those plastic chairs. Mm-hmm. Like, what is the thing that you're going, you know what? I've really missed this. And when these doors open and they say, go be free, anything you want. Where do you go? What do you do? I'm going to work out. I miss my health club so freaking much, man. I miss, uh, I mean, I walk around outside and, you know, climb stairs and stuff, but it's nothing like being there, hitting the weights, you know, and just being yeah. around the people that with that positive energy in the room. Um, who knows what that's going to look like when we get back. But uh, right. I just, when that, when that thing opens up, I'm going to be one of the first ones here. And I just cannot wait to get back there. So beautiful. Yeah. Marcus, tell everybody where they can find you. Um, and, and whether it's, you know, I don't know if it's all in one place, you're modeling your comedy, whatever it may be. I know you run those improv shows as well. You're very much in, we didn't even get into that, the improv side of things tonight. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll have you on again in the future, but um, where can people find you? Um, well, they can find me definitely on Insta- Instagram, Marcus the Comic, uh, on Twitter at Marcus the Comic. Yeah, I produce my own monthly comedy show. It's a free show. It's an hour long. It's the fourth Sunday of every month at the Clubhouse on Hollywood and Vermont, Vermont here in Los Angeles. Nice. Uh, it's half stand up, half improv with a twist. Now you have to come out to the show to see what the twist is. It's a lot. It's a lot right. of the popular show. So every fourth Sunday, Clubhouse, uh, you can catch me there, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mark your calendars. <laughs> nice. So Marcus the Comic on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Marcus Evans is his uh, is his name. I, I don't even know is it, is that a uh, is that a stage name or is that actually your name? That's the real one. That's the real name. Oh, beautiful, Marcus. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for taking time out of uh, your your schedule here to join me tonight. And uh, like I said, I, I do. I, I wish you well. Um, I I, th- I I think very positively about you, and uh, be nice to one day connect with you in person. I do plan. My goal was to head down this summer back into, into the LA area just to connect with some of the people that I had met down in Pasadena. And obviously that's uh, probably not gonna happen, but uh, next time I get down there, I, uh, I will definitely look for you. Oh, thanks, thanks for having me. It was a joy meeting you as well. And uh, even talking to everybody as we're, as we're, uh, as we're meeting here. Uh, thank you so much. It was great meeting you. Yeah, definitely. Let's hang out in, uh, here in LA. Let's hang out. Hope maybe I'll come up there sometime. Um, it's yeah. obviously an option. Very much so. Oh, I, I, I really love, uh, I think Katie Dodd, was that her name? If I can move this screen down. <laughs> K-Dodd. K- K- Dodd. Oh, yeah. 
I loved hearing her. She was just awesome. Just inspired by her. Uh, she was just awesome. So her and I had the same faith. Her and I both are born again Christians. And that's really where this positively comes from. It comes yeah, from Jesus cool. Christ. Well, you can definitely, I know uh, regulars on here have heard me say this a lot. Um, I am not very good on the technical side of things. Um, but, uh, all of our episodes. So we've had uh, like Joel Madison, who was down at the, the uh, comedy tournament. Um, Robert G. Lee, one of the judges who was down there as well, has been on the show. Joby Sad has been on the show. All of the episodes we've had will all be on YouTube at Timmy's Shorts. So Mark, if you want to go on there and uh, like and subscribe to Timmy's Shorts, K. Dodd's interview will be back up there. But all of our episodes will be there, including this one. Awesome. So, uh, and I'll let you know when, you, when yours kind of gets up and launched as well so you can let your friends know. So anyways, uh, Marcus, uh, stay well and uh, continue to keep learning and growing. And uh, we will connect in person one day. Thanks so much. Right, so looking forward to it. Take care. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you and your friends don't miss any of the laughs. Episodes will be uploaded here at Timmy's Shorts daily until I run out. And be sure to check out the description below for links to connect with myself or my guests on social media, support us by buying merchandise, and also download the podcast version of this show. Until next time, remember, your brain, it's for thinking, not for eating. So just say no to zombies. My name's Timmy Boyle.